Hello everyone, Atheotos here, and this is one more video on our quest to maximize the performance out of the AM386DX. And yeah, here I have my two little lab rats, but of course the focus today is on the second one. So I'm here today to give you a review and optimization guide for this motherboard. This is the 367C Revision 1, and the main chipset is a Unichip, the U4800 uh, VLX. A chipset that in theory supports uh, right back gas and should be quite a bit faster than our PC chips here. Now the reason we are looking on other motherboards now is just because uh, more or less I have done everything that it's possible to be done here. Yeah, in terms of modifications or optimizations I don't think that there is much more to do with my first uh, board. I had a few attempts to try some different hardware on this, but uh, none of them gave me better performance in the end. First of all I tried to change my VGA card from the classic uh, Trident uh, TVGA that I'm always using to this uh, very nice uh, Tencent. This is the ET4000AX. And yeah, for sure uh, this one is faster than the Trident. But in the end, at least on my system, this was only stable uh, when uh, the Isabas was clocked up to 11-12 MHz. Now comparing this at 11 MHz or this at uh, 18 MHz, the performance is actually quite similar, with the Trident actually winning some of the times. Another failed experiment was with the floating point unit, where I went down and uh, got uh, the Cyrix uh, KN version. Uh, here is the classic Cyrix and this is the KN. And the story is again very similar. This one is probably the fastest 386 floating point unit. So yeah, it is actually faster than the ULSI at everything, even at uh, Quake. But the problem is that it cannot uh, clock at uh, 55 MHz. The system uh, will boot, uh, will post, but uh, yeah, when you run a benchmark, the system just uh, freezes. Now I think I have to repeat my 386 uh, floating point units uh, video as now I have more of this, and I'm actually able to run at 55 MHz. So let's let this on the side for another video, and now go to our main topic for today. So on first look, uh, not uh, much to say about this motherboard. This is a very typical late uh, 386 motherboard that uh, comes in this very compact uh, form factor. Now of course, uh, when I look at the motherboard, my focus is always on modic uh, possibilities. And of course here I have already placed my AnyClock device. This was actually one of the easiest modifications and you can see me doing this on my video where I presented uh, these devices here. Now of course uh, this motherboard has an integrated AM386DX and uh, yeah for sure it's 100% possible to remove this and place a socket here. The math coprocessor of course it's already on the socket. Then regarding the casting system, yeah this is very typical again. This motherboard is equipped with uh, 128 kilobytes, but uh, this chipset is used in uh, 486 motherboards and definitely supports 256. So a 256 mode is, uh, yeah, for sure possible. You also have a lot of space here to place larger chips without the need to remove components. You could just push uh, these components down. One problem though is that the tag chips and the cast chips are far apart, and the extra address line you have to root should uh, connect to all of them. So it might be tricky to actually root this extra wire. Then uh, regarding caps, yeah, there are very few of them and uh, all of these are low quality Tadalum ones. It might be a good idea to replace all of this. Finally, I did a bit of reverse engineering and I want to point out something here. If we see down to this area, close to the second chipset, there is an appopulated uh, space for this HM8226 chip. Well, what's going on here is that in some other revisions, uh, here it's used an HMC chip, and every time there is this HMC chip, there is also this one populated. And the role of this one is probably to implement the ESA clock divider. This uh, jumper is more or less a pass-through for this uh, missing chip, so when you have this chip, uh, yeah, this jumper is unconnected. So I was looking around here just for the possibility of modding the ESA clock but uh, in the end, uh, this is probably not uh, necessary. So let's now boot this and have a look. Yeah, this is an AMI BIOS and uh, this is my version. I searched a bit online, it looks like there are only AMI BIOS for this board. There might be an award BIOS for a 486 motherboard with the same chipset. 
but uh, as for right now I'm not willing to risk this. Now as an initial point I suggest you to start here with uh, BIOS defaults as these are closer to the optimal settings. Yeah you also have these power on defaults but uh, yeah these are not good. So in the advanced CMOS setup there are a few very critical settings here. This cache memory select is for enabling or disabling the onboard cache. This turbo switch function made me nearly mad. You see the implementation on this motherboard is really broken. All the motherboards I have seen so far just cut uh, the CPU frequency in half. But uh, here the effect is much more stronger and a bit uh, irregular. Here on this position is uh, the turbo button. For normal operation you need to have a jumper at this position. But in the end even this does not work uh, 100%. You see the system booted at uh, full speed and everything goes fine, but on Doom I was getting some uh, very strange slowdowns. So in the end it's highly recommended to have this disabled here, just to avoid any of these problems. Then ok, here it's quite typical, uh, you want to have probably shadowing on for the video ROM and the system ROM. And finally here you have this auto configuration, that is actually very annoying again, that is uh, here as uh, this more or less uh, works on the advanced chipset setup options. This is the reason why on uh, one of my previous videos I mentioned that uh, this motherboard does not clock the ISA bus above 8 MHz. You see if you have this enabled, no matter what uh, you set the ISA clock bus in the chipset setup menu, it will always be set automatically to 8. So let's see here the advanced chipset setup. And the nice thing is that we have a lot of options here. This one uh, should always be disabled, as enabling this will decrease the performance uh, significantly. Then hidden refresh and slow refresh enabled, this increases the speed of the memory. Cast scheme uh, you have a right back or right through. Yeah, as I mentioned this board supports the right back scheme for the onboard cast. Now I have seen this having mixed results with many 486 systems. But here yes, there is a clear benefit uh, having this in the right back setting as all the benchmarks uh, got a boost from this. Video BIOS cast typically is not needed and it doesn't make any significant difference, maybe only on some synthetic benchmarks. This is the wait states for the main memory. And things here are uh, actually quite interesting because the same memory modules that uh, could do 50-52 MHz with zero wait states on my first motherboard could not even do 40 MHz here with zero states. And uh, yeah, my hypothesis here is that every motherboard uh, pushes uh, these RAMs in a very different way. There are actually many other memory timing settings that are not present here. I have seen this on some 486 motherboards. So that means that uh, my video where I compare different memory modules, it is a bit irrelevant. And the maximum frequency you will be able to get out of different memory modules with uh, zero weight states actually highly depends on the motherboard and how hard it pushes the memories. Here at uh, 40 MHz only my 1 MB memory modules were able to do zero weight states. Then I tried the 50 MHz but yeah it was a fail. Now here are the cast timings and uh, yeah you can set everything to zero weight states and enable without a problem. Master cycle swap I didn't notice any difference. IO recovery time, yeah, lower values here uh, just improve the IO performance. You can check this by looking at the ID performance. And finally we have these two settings. This one is for the clock of the ISA bus and it is a divider on the main oscillator. And you also have the option for wait states on the AT bus. And uh, yeah, here is one of the main problems of this motherboard. The whole ISA bus was unstable when you go above 8 MHz. Well, to be more accurate, above 8 MHz you have to increase the wait states to 1. And above uh, 10, 11 MHz uh, the system is either way unstable. This one wait state here has also a big performance impact. Basically a 10 MHz ISA with one wait state performs more or less the same as uh, 8 MHz with zero wait states. So this motherboard is very limited regarding the ISA bus clock and as we will see this is actually a deal breaker here. So yeah, with my any clock device I was able to run the system at uh, 50 MHz but uh, was only stable if I set here uh, one wait state and divide by 10. 
and then of course if you want to overclock your CPU above uh, 50 megahertz the only option here is to go with something like that so with an ESA bus clock uh, that is relevant to the reference frequency now I have found also a tool that allows me to edit uh, hidden options on motherboards with AMI BIOS I will make a detailed video for both Howard and AMI BIOS of uh, this era in the future now regarding this board there are not uh, many things here mainly some stuff that are related to a 486 machine yeah at least for now i don't see something very interesting here so let's now see some benchmarks i have here my system clocked at uh, 50 megahertz with uh, 16 megabytes of ram and of course with uh, one weight state and first of all the memory bandwidth number here is uh, quite unreal doing the calculations ah uh, yeah this is actually more than 50 percent higher than my original motherboard the score here is uh, quite expected, maybe just one tick uh, lower than my other motherboard. Now the cast speed and the memory throughput here are not actually that high. And yeah, this is a bit strange. So let's also have a look at the cast check tool. And the cast speed is actually more or less on the same levels as my other motherboard. While again, uh, the main memory speed is significantly higher. This even beats my 55 megahertz setup and uh, again on the same frequency is something like 50 percent higher so we can definitely say that uh, this motherboard uh, pushes the memories uh, way harder so yeah it's just a bit more clear now why we cannot get that easily zero weight state at uh, 40 megahertz and this is a uh, check it nothing uh, too special here okay maybe compared to my first motherboard the integer performance is one percent higher but the floating point performance is one percent lower of course this is not a surprise because last time we did some BIOS optimizations there that uh, boosted the floating point performance. And yeah, such a setting is not available here. And uh, with Landmark uh, the story is very similar. The CPU speed is just uh, slightly faster than my first motherboard. And there is a 2-3% loss here in the floating point unit. So yeah, it looks like there is very little hope for this board to help us beat some records. But uh, let us also see some results from real benchmarks. Here I have the measurements for this board at uh, 40 MHz and 50 MHz. At 40 of course the ESA bus is at 8 MHz with uh, 0 weight states. And at 50 at 10 MHz with 1 weight state. I think the best comparison is here at 40. This is the best case scenario for this board, as the higher you go with the CPU, the higher the bottleneck of the ESA bus would be. And also I was able to run some zero weight state RAMs here. And we can directly compare this with this line, that is exactly the same setup, and also before my BIOS optimizations on this board. And still we can see that this uh, second motherboard loses at uh, every category, except maybe the PC player benchmark, and uh, Quake. The reason of course is that the lower the frame rate, the lower the impact of the low clock in the ESA bus. And uh, here for example, Doom uh, loses 6-7%. And of course uh, VGA speed and uh, VIT speed are crippled. This is something 30% down and this is something 40%. Now here with the 50 MHz results, I also run the floating point tests. And here we can compare with this line. Of course here I had uh, 256 kilobytes of CAS, but uh, this does not really affect uh, these benchmarks. And uh, for the most part all these are more or less the same, maybe just a little bit uh, slower. So it's time for some conclusions. This motherboard and uh, chipset definitely has a very fast uh, memory controller. This though pushes the memories too hard. Still in the end uh, you will get a very nice memory throughput. This chipset also offers write back mode for the CASIS, though the throughput numbers here were more or less the same. In the end, all this, in terms of pure CPU performance, makes this port uh, just a little bit faster. But uh, then because we are missing also some uh, BIOS settings, uh, the floating point performance is maybe 2-3% lower. And of course the biggest problem with this port is the limited ESA clock speed. I cannot really tell uh, why this implementation is so bad. The good hypothesis is because this board has a very poor layout here and also a great number of buffer chips on the ESA bus. By having all these chips it's very hard to balance all the signals. So yeah, maybe this is actually the reason for this problem. We might have 5-6 chips here but uh, my first motherboard only have one or two. So as for right now I will put this board on the side. It doesn't really make sense to go for the other modes, like the cast mode or the socket. 
However, there is a very crazy mode that can really make uh, this one sign. This should be totally possible, but it's also not that easy to do. And it is all about converting one of these Caesar slots to a VLB slot. And the good news is that I have everything I need to do this. As I recently bought this broken 486 board here, that has more or less exactly the same chipset. I also think that uh, this board is the ideal candidate for such a mod, due to this uh, clock limitation here. Now, do not expect me to do this uh, tomorrow, but this is something that I will definitely do at some point. So you know what to do if you don't want to miss this video. It will be one more of these uh, crazy mod ones. Then of course I am also looking at the other 386 motherboards. And here I will introduce you to my third uh, 386 Labrador. This one is uh, based on an ALI chipset. I did some fast testing and the ESA bus here does not have a clocking problem. So we are gonna look at this uh, the next time. And you know again what to do if you don't want to miss this. So that was for today. As usual, I hope uh, you like this. So see you again next time.